I don't know about Thucky. I don't know if he's excited. Thucky, yeah, what's his name? It's Thucky. He's five years old, right? Five, yes. Okay. And trained how much? Um, he was started last summer. Okay. Just in walk tri canter. Okay. I took him to the clinic at um, at, at Thor with uh, Barbara Frisch. Yeah. And we taught him a little bit about Tolt, which okay. had been kind of suppressed because of just the trot. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I took him home and then I worked on him and then I took him back down to the trainer who knows nothing about Tolt, doesn't pretend it, but, but she knows everything about training horses. Okay. And I told her like what I was after and we worked on him. Okay. And you'll see. And I would love to have you ride him at some point, okay. have a, you know, see what you think. Yeah. Well, I can show you, you know. I think it would be a good idea to show him to him a little bit. So he, yes. his tail training has started a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, he tells quite nicely. Oh, okay. Got it. Oh, okay. you'll see. Good. You'll see. Good. I Very think good. He, he, but, but his trot is really his one fabulous trot. Okay. But, um, so show him to me a little bit. Yeah. Right? I mean, show me the gates. Yeah. Walk to our canter and then toe. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, you just ride them around a little bit like, just pretend I'm not here for now, okay? Right. You know, it's kind of hard, but... Okay, it's enough for the top. Show me some other gates, please. There's the trot. A canter, then it's good. Then you can just come here and we'll talk about this a little bit. So, in the beginning of his training, he does your stroke. Basically, and I think, that, I think that she suppressed it in the toll tank. Right, right, right. We did not do the same thing on the other one. Okay, all right, slow down to work. Come here. <coughs> So first of all, I think it's a nice horse. He's a good looking horse. He's um, nice gait, nice uh, steps, extended movements, and looks like a very nice temperament too. He does, he is. He's, he's a little bit, the issues with him have been um, a little bit, oh, I can't go there. Uh, oh, I'm scared. Oh, yeah, but he's much he's better. Amazing. He's much better how, now. How, how was his breeding? Who was his, who was his, his father is Stigandi, oh, okay. and his mother is Koma, yeah. whose father was, Oh, shit. Doesn't matter. Gassy. Gassy, okay. From Borders Bay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so here's what I've, I've noticed. Like I said, I've noticed this. He's a nice horse. He's got nice gates and all that stuff. On Tolt, he started a little bit high. And what I noticed a little bit when I look at him, his pole is a little high. It's a little bit like high here and high there. Okay? I would like him to have a stronger top line, stronger, the withers to come up, stronger back. You can see a huge difference when he started tilting. He was a little bit high, and he was a little bit pacey then. As soon as his neck came down a little bit and his withers came up, his tilt became clean and nice. Okay? Same thing on trot, same thing on canter, same thing everywhere. It's a little bit like an S shape like that. Okay? Sure, sure. So the spine has a little S shape to it in the first place. His is a little, has too much hooks, you know what I mean? It's like the, so here's a one way to explain it. This is his forehead, my fingers. And my elbow is his withers, right? And this is his neck, like this. He's a little bit up here, right? So the withers are down just a little bit, which means the hind then goes up because the spine is like this, right? And when this goes down, this goes up, okay? If you, um, because his neck is pretty round, he can be rather raised and round. Mm -hmm. He can do a little bit of this, so he can, he can look very pretty up here, round. 
but it doesn't mean his withers and his hind end is in, is in an ideal that. place. I understand right? that. So if we if we if we visualize this, this is the forehead. This is the 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 the, the withers. What we want to see happen is this. Okay. So literally, the S we straighten it up a little bit, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. It has a lot of hooks to it now. We want to straighten it up. Okay. So the withers come up. And then the hind end has access to come under. The croup goes down. The withers come up. What we're always trying to look for, like when, when training horses, we want to see that when you see a, a very impressive show horse, you see like the croup is, is down, right? His, his hind legs are closer to his front legs. He's really engaged, and then the withers come up, right? That's kind of the goal. For a young horse, it can be a very normal place to be. But I would start to work in that direction before it, 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 it before it starts to be not not a good situation. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. What we literally want to see happen too is because it's as shaped, we talk about long neck versus short neck. Mm -hmm. This is the short neck, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It can be very round and pretty, mm -hmm. but when he does this, it literally looks longer. Mm -hmm because it becomes longer, because mm -hmm. the vertebrae are a little mm -hmm. bit of a shape, you straighten out the S, it's actually longer, okay? Um, a little bit I can explain it here. You just sit in your saddle and feel this. See oh. what happens there? You come up, oh. right? Yeah. And this is what we call forehead forward. Uh -huh. That's when this happens, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Forehead came forward, uh -huh. you're sitting here, right? Uh -huh. So you came up, uh -huh. okay? I can feel that. Right, so let me show you this. Now he's just bending to the pole. You didn't feel it now, did you? No. Exactly. So the bend to the pole it does not is do not this. The, it's not this. It's not this. The bend to the pole, we need that as well, uh, to a certain extent. But that alone does not take care of it. The horse can very easily round his neck. That makes a lot of sense. See I what I mean? Yeah. He can very easily round his neck by stretching a little bit here, the ligament here, right? Without changing anything happening in his body. And then it's just what we call false racing. Mm -hmm. The horse can be very round and pretty, uh -huh, uh -huh. but the hind end is, the end is still disconnected or not, not being used ideally. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I started learning, it was all about bending to the pole. Getting them bent to the pole, bent to the pole, bent to the pole. And that helped us a lot. And we thought we kind of had it figured out by just teaching them to bend to the pole. Soon riders became extremely good at that. They were really good at getting the bend to the pole quickly. And then we kind of got a little bit of that side effect, which we call uh, false racing, where the horse is bent to the pole, but is still false. And not using its body. Not using its body. You see this in competitions, both in dressage and, and Icelandic horses, Absolutely. quite a bit, Absolutely. that they look, and it, it can be very deceiving. Even judges have a very hard time seeing the difference between the horse being very round and pretty, and he can even be gating well and everything, but he's not through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Usually, you, when you have false racing, you have horses who are leg movers, meaning that is not, they're not body movers, they're not moving through the body. Mm -hmm. Often, they're short-stepped. Um, so, so there is ways to evaluate it, but it can be tricky. He's definitely a body moving horse. Oh yeah. So I mean that's oh, not yeah, thought about I, that. I, I feel it sometimes yeah. I feel it much more yeah. than yeah. others, right? right? And he's tense, but, it's new, it's everything. But you have to be this is where this is what this is his tendencies. He is a little bit built like, you know, croup goes up a little bit and a little bit like this. So you have to a little bit uh, see no horses horses are not meant to be ridden. Right. So every horse is built like this to a certain extent, right? So that's why we're, 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 we're always breeding for a certain kind of confirmation that makes it easier for the horse to carry you the way it's healthy for him. And in any horse you will work with, there will be something that tells you, yeah, I gotta be careful of this, I gotta be careful of this, you know what I mean? Some horses have this tendency, some horses have this tendency, some horses have some different kind of tendencies. Why? Because they are not meant to be ridden, right? So there's, it always comes back to that. It's our job to help them get into a situation where they are actually okay with being with physically and mentally. You know what I mean? Okay. So, to keep going with this theory, our goal will be to get his forehead forward, right? You know, he's not letting me do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there we yeah, go. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, oh, I'm ready now. We say that you access the back, see this back or top line, you know, this is what I was doing right here. Yeah. You feel the back change. We access the back through the sides. Okay. okay? Why is that? When the horse is straight, he has a very good use of his underneck muscle, sometimes too good. 
And that's why they have this tendency to a little bit overuse it sometimes, especially if they're tense or afraid. So yeah, naturally a tense position for a horse is the pole going up, and not get it strong. That's the flight, flight position, right? So if a horse is insecure a little bit, he will always look for that more than anything else. If you see a horse in a stall that is like dead scared, like starting to be trained, like in Iceland, they stand like this, right? So when they start to get trained and relaxed, you start to see them do this. If a horse is scared, you'll never see him do this. No. Up here, right? Straight, they have a huge, a really good use of this muscle. And they can use it, um, obviously they need it to certain, to certain some point, you know, they, we don't want them just to take it away, but they tend to overuse it more when they're straight. When they are bent, they have very little power, or very hard for them to use this mm -hmm, muscle. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons. It's easier to get them to relax the neck like this, and therefore uh, change the position of the back. Obviously, you want to be able to do it straight with a horse straight too, mm -hmm. but it tends to be easier with the bend. It's a famous saying by Nuno Oliveira, the godfather of classical mm -hmm. dressage, mm -hmm. that you access the back through the sides. Okay? And that really makes a lot of sense. That's why we do so much of all this bending stuff. That's why so many of the things we do start on a circle, because it is easier to access the horse there than when he's straight. Then he can have all these positions he can go into. You can have nothing to do with it. Okay, so another thing just before we start to work here, which I'm a, I'm a huge believer in, is that we need to be forming the horse on the way forward. Why is that? That's because of this forehead forward theory. So we want the forehead to go this way, right? To lengthen the neck. But the reins work this way. So how are we gonna, if we would only have a hook here, we would be in good shape, but we don't. We can't pull the forelock forever, right? So that's the problem we run into. And that again comes back to the basic theory, horses are not meant to be ridden. The reins are working the wrong direction for this. You know what I mean? We pull back, but we actually want them to go forward with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, the, see the dilemma we are in there, right? So the only way we have to get the forehead forward, or at least one of the ways, is to ride forward. Yeah. So if the horse is always thinking backwards or you're being held back too much, this becomes very hard. So that's why I, I talk a lot about forming, like rounding or forming, on the way forward. So instead of always forming too much, like to do rain, mm -hmm. rain, 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 mm -hmm. form as the horse is walking forward. <clears throat> and one last thing, what I, what I talk about a lot and I want you to think about before we start to work here, is um, I really believe in the theory that if the body works correctly, the head falls in the right place. So if we can get the legs, the back, and the whole body of the horse to work in balance in the way we want it, the head position is kind of like a result of that. Mm -hmm. Versus what we often have a tendency to do is all the way around. Constantly messing with the head, hoping that we change the body, it sometimes works, but not always. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I, I like to approach it. So in other words, the idea is approach it from back to front. Okay? So, <clears throat> go ahead and walk. Just keep him forward. That's it. Good. Good. Even longer rain. I'm not thinking about head position at all. I'm just thinking about his steps. I'm just, just think about his body. Don't think about where his head is. He can lick the ground if he wants to. There you go. Good. I want to see that hind step go way over the, the footprint of the front step. There you go, good. Very nice. See, I like to get on my horse, release the rein, and walk. Versus getting on my horse, take the rein, and walk. See what I mean? I'm sure you, you've experienced getting on a horse, taking the rein, and walking. And I think it sometimes takes takes a little thinking to actually turn that around. Because a lot of people just get on, they take a hold of the steering wheel and they start to ride. I want to get on, drop the reins and walk. I'm still riding the horse and telling you where to go. Mm -hmm. But I don't need all that contact. This is the beginning. Obviously we will ride with contact, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to ride like this, whatever. But we need to be able to ride like this. Uh, what happens with it is the horse feels freedom. He feels the freedom to move, which is very important. He starts to walk through his body right away because he's not being restricted. 
he warms up in the position that he chooses, which by the way is always low. Right. I've never seen a relaxed torso in his head up in the air. Um, you get a half year horse, you get a horse that is not in any way feels closed in or frustrated to the rain. Very nice, very nice. Ears are forward, he's looking, he's looking ahead, he's spirited, he's happy. That's in my, my opinion very, very important beginning. Okay, go ahead and turn him around. less important with young horses and probably as much as I think it's important with every horse it's probably even more important with young ones that are have kind of more recently learned learned uh, to react to the reins very nice okay here's what I want you to do now think about it this way just take your time keep your reins loose I want to start to work with rain contact but I want to tell you how I want you to think about it and approach it I want you to keep that walk I want you to keep that energy and that positive forward focus. The positive forward focus is out that door to his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> At least it's in one direction. <laughs> no, no, he's actually quite forward and he's, he's extending well. Yeah, obviously he knows what is home and he knows where he would get to eat tonight. But anyway, I want you to keep that walk as much as you can through your leg and through your seat, but only take the loop of the reins. So you gotta shorten up your reins and get, gather your reins up but just so basic rain contact that you're just taking the loop of the reins. You're just taking the slack of the reins. You're not getting into his mouth. You're not asking him for anything. You're not slowing him down. You're not taking a hold of his mouth in any way. Ride him forward. See, I don't want him to start to round too much. I just want to ride him and I just want you to be in so, such a basic contact that you're not asking for anything. You are just getting into rhythm with the horse. So the rain becomes like an extension of your hand. There, there, very nice. And the feeling in your hand and therefore his mouth is the same every step he takes. There you go. Try to make sure there's not, a, I don't want to see the rain on and off and on and off, tight and loose, tight and loose. I want you to find that rhythm. And he's quite the rhythmatic walk, so that's it. Good, 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 good. The reason I started talking about this part a bit this way is I ran into it again and again that, that people were, you know, I could teach people or, or, or help them to ride on a loose rein, no problem, or they could even do that. And then when I started talking about rein contact, they would just get in the horse's mouth. Yeah. I'm not saying you're doing that, but I want you to really think about this. This is very important to me. This first, we call this the first step or first level of rein contact, is just taking the loop off. So you have a rhythm, you have forward-thinking horse, you have a loose rein, right? So you just take that loop of the rein, there you go. Just take the loop of the rein, and you just kind of get into rhythm with the horse. You get into his rhythm before you even start to mess with it, you know what I mean? Drive him, if he goes down like this, just drive him a little bit more, there you go. Okay, good. If that's not enough, then you would lift up your hand, but if driving is enough, that's good. Very good, okay. So this is very good. This is the first step, right? You feel that? You, just kinda, you can be with the horse. You need to be able to be in contact. You need to be able to be with him. And you step is kind of like the theory being one with the horse, right? Without asking for anything. Without demanding anything. And then we can always ask for something and do you know, more or less from here. But this is like the, the kind of a basic contact. Sounds like it. Oh yes. Somebody's got him back. Okay, now go ahead and just sit up extra straight and start to now increase the rain contact. And you do that by simply slowing down the walk. So you're just gonna slow the walk down, just pull the reins back a little bit. Right in very slow walk, you relax, make sure you don't stop. There you go, good. And then uh, lengthen it again. Back into the long walk you went before. First step of rain contact, basic rain contact. Okay, slow the walk down again. 
You're not collecting yet because you're not driving any more than you have to just to make sure it doesn't stop. There you go. Good. 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 Little bit slower. Little bit slower. Little bit slower. Keep that. Ah, no, stop. Little bit slower. Good, good. And uh, forward. Very good. And what I'm typically looking for here is two things. That the horse actually slows down and waits for you. <coughs> so he's not rushing forward. He just waits for you, right? Which he does just fine. Pick him up a little bit, driving. There you go. And the fact that he will shove himself on the main. He's doing both just fine. He's good at this stuff. That when the horse is going behind the bit, like I said, he's not stepping under. He's not. He's cheating with the hind end. That's, that's pretty. So the way to approach that problem is from the hind end. And the first step in that is driving both more. Okay, slow the work down again. Okay. Okay. And then um, and forward and regular walk again or, or extended walk again, sorry. Now next time we start to extend them a little bit more, give them a little more space. See. So the extension forward and forward thinking is in my opinion a very important part of collecting the horse. So go ahead and start to slow the walk down and then you wait for him to soften up on the reins. As he starts to soften up on the reins, you drive him a little bit. Make sure he stays soft, and you drive him a little bit, make sure he stays soft. And you're trying to get him to bring those hind legs closer to the front. But staying soft from the rain. There you go. There you go. Good. A little bit less forward, slow him down, slow him down. Nice, nice, and forward. Okay, come here a second, that makes sense for him to Just kind of pop him here so I can show him. Show you on him. So here's, here's that. So we take a line down here from the hip one and down. Right? Mm -hmm. Down here. From the hip one and down. The more the horse swings the leg behind that line, the more he's pushing himself forward. Right? In a pushing position. Like flying pace or fast tempo toes uh -huh. or something like that. Where, they, where you want pushing power, but not so much carrying power. Okay. okay? The more the horse swings the leg under, uh, in front of that line, less behind, then you're more into a carrying power collection. Okay? When we collect the horse, we need to shorten the steps. The steps are being shortened. But we need them to be shorter from back to front. So they stay under themselves and take short steps, but not behind themselves and take short steps. So if you so what very often happens is we collect the walk or the horse, he collects correctly, then we get a little bit too greedy and we start to keep it too much, and too long, and it becomes a little bit too hard. So slowly those short steps move further and further behind the horse. You see the croup pop up, and you end up with a similar feeling, you know, it's just like the horse is taking the short prancing steps, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it's behind them uh -huh, instead of uh -huh. underneath them. Uh -huh. That's why I try to approach it, especially in the beginning with the younger horses. Um, extended walk, collect the work, and then extend it again, yeah, so and then collect it again, to keep those hind legs extended under the horse. Make sense? Because mm -hmm. if you just have to collect and collect and collect, very typically you see it starts quite well, and then do, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. group pops mm -hmm. up again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I look at the horse, it's pretty easy for me because I'm on the ground. I'm wanting to see that croup lower a little bit. Then the hind legs are under. If they are behind, the croup pops up. Mm -hmm. You see a high croup. You want to see it lower a little bit. So he's kind of tilting it under a little bit. Okay? And that's also the way we want him to get into tilt. Okay? Okay. Let's work with this a little bit and then we start to work into tilt. So go ahead and maybe just turn around. There's no guarantee that he will extend enough by himself. Good. And then go ahead and, and gather him up a little bit, shorten the walk, and then collect it a little bit. Slow the walk down. So you slow it down, you wait until he gets soft, and then your lag comes and you drive him and you keep him slow and you drive him and you keep him slow and you try to collect him more. Slow him down, keep him soft, slow less forward, less forward, slow down, drive a little bit, make sure he stays soft on the reins and round, he's a little bit high now. Keep it collected a little bit more. Slow down, slow down, slow down, less forward. There, there, and now extend him. Good? See, what I'm always realizing more and more, or I feel like I'm finding more and more, is the most important thing in training for us 
is training the respond to the cues, uh -huh. like getting into the exercises and then out on them. Because when you put the cues on, like the rain and lag in this case, and you see two, the horse goes into a certain exercise, there you go, good, good, and then forward. And I think that's mostly when the magic is happening, when you are getting the horse to respond to those cues, and therefore uh, getting into the exercise, and then keeping him in the exercise, that does much less. Do you know what I mean? That gives you less results. It's the, it's the actual part while you get into it. Uh -huh. When you're the creating the transition. The transition, exactly. And I think if it's, if it's one thing that any writing instructor in the world is going to agree on, no matter what discipline they're in, that is the fact that the most important thing is transitions, right? Yes. Probably heard that 10,000 times. Good. Do it again. And then you can start to do it a little more frequently. You don't have to write the extended work for a long time. You just have to get into it. More, more, less forward. Less forward. There. Good, good, good. And then let's stand again. Good job. Make sure you extend. Give him a little more rain when you extend. There you go. The only way the forehead can go forward is if your hand goes right? If your hand is out that you hold your hand back too much, he will be short in the neck and it's Good. Good. And forward. Okay. Now, I'm going to move this into 12 elements. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to extend the walk, then shorten the walk, and then collect the walk, or slow the walk down, and then collect the walk, then push him into 12, just a few steps, and back into walk. Get him a little more round. He's too high now. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Open up your hand forward a little bit. Forward. Release him a little bit. And then take him again. Sometimes if he goes too high, you might have to move your hand a little bit forward and then ask him to round again. Push your hand forward, then he can lower the neck. There you go. Good. And then collect him again a little bit. Not too much. And then just go ahead and tilt a couple of steps. Drive, 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 back to walk. Okay, stop here a second. What typically happens when you collect and then you ask for a little more energy? They come a little bit too high, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And what can very easily happen is they go high, and then all of a sudden they find themselves so high that they can't really successfully round without like cranking uh -huh. in. Uh -huh. And then because we came up with them and we're still asking them to round, we are kind of stuck, us and them. And then you have to sometimes kind of give him some space forward so he can do this, right? Lower the neck just a little bit, mm -hmm. and then catch him again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't just keep going up mm -hmm. here because it's stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And the only way he can lower the neck is if your hand gives him an inch of or two of space, and then take him again. That's great. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's so very helpful. So find, you find that position here a little bit more, right? Yeah, yeah. This can only happen if this happens. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He cannot, if you hold back, right, right, no. then he can't do this, no, right? He can, he can only, only go do up, this, this, right? Yeah, and yeah. now he's stuck. Yeah, so yeah. then your hands have to go forward, so he can do a little so bit of this, down. and then you can take your hands again, and get this. Cool. See what I mean? Okay, yeah. let's do it again. Good, nice, until that. Just try, just more like, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Back to walk. Very nice. That was cool. That was cool. That was yeah, very good. Yeah, there yeah. you found the I, right I, position. There you had him correctly set up. You know what I mean? I did not know how to do that top transition. That's great. Good. Do it again. And what happens after you have him set up, really the only thing that happens is more driving. You don't take more. You just keep that contact. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There. And then just drive. 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 Good. 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 And back to walk. Good. And just set him up. Do it again. Slow him down. Collect him up a little bit. And with a young horse like this, I can almost say that you want to collect him as little as you can get away with, but still get tilt. You don't want to over collect him into tilt, because then you're, 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 it's too challenging. That comes later. There you go. Back to walk. But you gotta collect him enough that he's doing it connected and he's correct. 
Again, again. Get him all around. It was too high into it. Yeah, now he was yeah, not yeah, prepared yeah, well yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Take the time. Take the time. Rest him more. There. Get him a little more around there. And just drive. Uh -huh. Don't no, pull the rain at the same time you drive. Uh -huh. You can be in contact, but make sure you're not pulling and kicking at the same time. All right? So you have to make sure you're in contact, but your fingers are soft around the rain as you drive. You don't throw the reins away, but you don't take them either, because then he's going to keep them up. That's, That's bad. Because if you take on the same time you drive into the dog, he's not going to dare to take contact in Yep. So yep. Contact, yep. You're up and you're it. So be in contact, but make a point of softening your fingers as you drive. Nice. Not too much though. Make sure they don't start to flop and loose. Good. So set him up. It's all about the preparation. It's all about the setup. Set him up. There you go. Keep your reins in contact, but soft and just drive them. Nice. Back to work. See what's happening now, even though he's not going perfectly round into tilt, which I don't care about at this point, he's going much more supple into it. He's going into clean, soft tilt because he, you're soft, because you have him set up and your reins are in softer contact. Good. Very nice. And back to work. You want to make that transition fluent, like very soft, flowing transition. Like there's a, like an effortless flow between walk and talk. It's the same here, more or less anyway. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Good, good. And make sure you don't start to get lazy on the preparation now. Slow down to work. It was okay there, but it was absolute minimum. Make sure you take your time to collect up the walk a little bit. Get behind legs a little bit closer to the front legs. There. Get around and soft. Around and there. And out top. Soft. Good. Now do, do this same thing. But just do it on a 20 meter circle here in front of us. Or some kind of circle. Just, I don't care about the size really. Just as long as it's a small band to this thing. Keep bending there. The band can help you keep him a little bit more around him. So back to work. And don't talk for many steps. I'll show you how we approach that. Ready, bent him and into top. Good. So in this case, you can increase a little bit the rain into top, but only one. See what I mean? That's the reason I'm on a circle. If you increase both reins into top, he will brace against you. But you can get away with increasing the bend a little bit and push him into top that way. Bent him and into top. Make the circle a little bit smaller. Bend and drive, bend and drive, into tilt, as you bend, into tilt, as you bend. Now, drive in. Up. Use the stick. Now he's trying a little bit. There you go. Good. Good. And then back to work. And it can just be a tiny bit. It doesn't have to be a, you know, a lot of increase in the back. Nice. All I'm really wanting now is him to go quietly, smoothly, eff with, 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 with as little effort as possible into tilt without throwing his nose up in the air. Nice. Good. Make sure you prepare him. Make sure you set him up. Don't get into tilt from extended walk. That's never going to be good. This extended walk has absolutely no carrying power. There you go. Very good. Very good. Very nice. Keep doing that. Very good. Very good. Come back here. Right. Collect them up one more time and talk to you on the show. Make sure there's a small bend to him. Not a whole lot. There you go. Good. Very nice. See, there he actually almost increased the roundness into top. Very good. That's what we want, right? Yeah. At least as long as he stays kind of quiet and not trying to look up too much. Good, good. He can be more round on top, but it doesn't have to at this point. Okay, good. I'm going to show you one other thing. This is the beginning. Walk, tilt, walk. Walk, tilt, walk, walk, tilt, walk. And with a lot of focus on the walk before the tilt. Okay, come here a second. Now, typically, for most horses, slow tempo tilt 
is pretty hard. Right? To right. reach low tempo toll right. is, is, is a difficult exercise, right. so to speak. Usually medium tempo is much easier, right? Because there they don't have to collect as much. See, I look at it a little bit this way. Slow tempo toll, they have to collect a lot. Fast tempo toll, they have to push a lot. Medium, they can kind of float in between, right? They just kind of use the momentum to keep going. So, uh, so what I, with the horse, I think, that is gated like him, and we'll try it. It makes sense to do walk to walk, which we were doing. We can also do a running walk, but I'll maybe just we'll look into it either later this lesson or, or tomorrow. But then, when I start to take the next step in 12 training, I will a little bit run through the slow tempo, and I'm going to prepare him. Everything is exactly the same. You set him up. You you prepare the tilt, you ask for tilt, and instead of slowing down again, or instead of keeping that, you speed up a little bit. Okay. So it's preparation, preparation, tilt, faster, 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 back to walk. Don't have to be fast, but every step you take has to be faster than the one before. Okay. Uh, walk, get ready, slow tempo, faster, 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 faster walk. Why? Because in the most simple way, we can say there's two ways to get the hind ending gates. One is in between the eights, right? Collection. Rain and lag, and rain and lag, and you drive the hind end towards the front end, right? The other one is just speeding up. That's where speed changes are so helpful. Because when you speed up, the horse has to use the hind end if he speeds, if he listens to you, right? Mm -hmm. And then when he slows down, if he does it properly, he needs to kind of sit back on it also. So I'm kind of using the speeding up momentum or the increasing in speed to activate the hind end more. You okay, know? okay. So to you want that the, speed to come from the back? Yes, the energy to come from the back. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'm hoping that I see uh, preparation with tow, slow tempo, speed up a little bit. It doesn't have to be like an explosion, just like a little bit faster, 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 with to see how much we can ask him for. And I'm hoping to see the croup go down a little bit as he speeds up. And then just slow down and start all over again. Okay? Let's try it. Go ahead and go to the rail again. Now we do it on the rail, the outside, not, not the circle. Take your time. He's not. He's not ready. He's too high. He's. He's looking up too much. There. Wait. 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 Move the hand forward for a second. And take him again. Move it. There you go. Good. No. Wait. Wait. Slow him down a little bit. Slow him down. There you go. Uh, right there. Hold tempo toe. Good. Hold tempo toe. Go ahead. Faster. 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 And hold tempo toe. So, as you speed him up, it's a very fine line to find. You have to be in contact. You cannot lock him in. You cannot throw it away. I mean, you gotta go with him, but you gotta give him the space. So same thing here, as you speed him up, make a point of being in contact, but soft. So never lock the fingers around your rein, keep them around the rein, but soft. Speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, good, good, and back to walk. Very good. If you find the right momentum, what's going to happen? is you can imagine you're wanting to ride the forehead forward, right? Yeah. But he needs to dare to take that contact. There's to be soft and, 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 and rhythmic enough with him that he can take a little bit of a contact and move his forehead forward and round as he is going forward. Think about that. It was looking good. Do it again. Ready? Good. All right. And you can do a little bit very soft, gentle left and right movement. So it's like he's facing two inches to the left, two inches to the right as he is speeding up. That's okay too. Just to kind of have, try to encourage him to keep the under neck soft and therefore hopefully round more and stretch the top line more. Ready? Whenever you are.
pay attention to his tail, how it's really moving in, in waves. And that's, see, we say that the tail is a good indication of what the spine is doing. So if the tail is going supple and going in waves, so is the, the spine doing with it. This is good. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, one more time here. Take your time off. <laughs> okay, speed him up. Very nice. Keep speeding up. Good, good, good. Very nice. And back to work. Good. Give him a long way now. Good boy. Very good. That was very nice. good. Yeah. That was very nice. It was very nice. And you were actually riding his forehead forward and riding him into the right position. That's the goal. Instead of, instead of pulling him into the right position, you're riding him into it. See the difference there? Yeah. That's yeah. the goal. That's, That's the goal. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, really fun. Really fun. And you know he has a lot of speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He's a good horse. He's he has, a good horse. He has a lot of yeah. speed. He's, I don't know. He's got some speed. I don't tell him how much speed he has. <laughs> We'll find, we'll figure that out. Maybe we need a, a long straight road for that. Huh? Yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine that. And, and, and um, he seems to be, uh, you know, what I, and, and what I can feel also, he's well trained, he's, he's soft, and yeah. there's a lot of good things to work with. Yeah. And he definitely is a talented horse. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good.